Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradian here at the Naval Submarine League's annual conference and trade show just outside Washington, D.C., the number one gathering of submariners, U.S. Navy submariners from around the world. And it's our honor to be talking to Katie Arrington, who is the special <laughs> assistant uh, to Ellen Lord for cyber uh, security. Ellen Lord, of course, the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition and Sustainment. Katie, you knocked the ball uh, out of the park. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, absolutely fascinating discussion. Really got people att uh, people's attention attention focused on cyber and cybersecurity and the massive changes that are going on. Full disclosure, Northrop Grumman sponsors our weekly cyber report and our cyber coverage. Talk to us a little bit about CMMC. I know you tried to not make an onerous acronym here, but um, <laughs> it did. is it is a strategic change in terms of stepping up the, the department's cybersecurity game. Talk to us uh, not just about what it is, but also how aggressively you guys are really rolling this out. Under the leadership of Miss Ellen Lord, when we started this endeavor, um, it was February of this past year. She said to be aggressive because we didn't have the time to wait. Our adversaries are not sitting back and leaning in and saying, oh, we'll come back to you when you're ready. They're coming at us and they're hitting us hard. And they're hitting us in the most vulnerable places. They're going to the lowest tiers in the supply chain. Those people who are the, the bedrock of what this country was built on, that small business, that entrepreneur, they're going in and they're exfilling their systems and they're waiting and they're patient. And we needed a way to level set and make it easier for industry. Um, one of the things that the CMMC does, it creates a unified cybersecurity standard for the whole of the Department of Defense. No longer is that small business going to need to run out if they want to do work for the Army, figure out what the Army needs, and then change the next day to the Navy customer. We're going to have a unified standard. It's not one size fits all in security. That's one of the things we've realized, that there's a maturity level. Most of the contracts that we're discussing, the 300,000 companies in our supply chain, they're only going to need a CMMC level one, basic cyber hygiene to protect not just the Department of Defense, but themselves more importantly. Our adversaries, when they're exfilling, aren't just taking particular information, they're taking everything they're getting. They're getting your personal information, they're getting your banking information. So we needed to help get everyone level set. The CMMC is one tool of many, as I discussed earlier, I make the analogy of the cyber tank. It's a, an aggressive time frame that we're going to start rolling this out in 2020. It will take us some years to get this fully implemented, but we are aggressive because the time is now. We do not have the time to wait two years or five years down the line. Um, I thought your uh, c uh, compelling business case you made for the nation mm -hmm. in terms of the $640 billion that's been s stolen that comes out to $4,000 uh, after, pre taxes. after taxes <laughs> after taxes for each American uh, family. There are now going to be five of these uh, security levels. You said uh, the one is, is the more basic one. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us about the other four and what they signify because you guys are trying to protect not just the technology on it, but also the manufacturing processes where the Chinese have, have really been in particular focused on, on their intellectual property. No, first, let me just level set. It's not just China. We have many adversaries, Russia, North Korea, Iran. We have a great deal. So remember, this is about protecting the United States of America, first and foremost. Um, the other levels will go from, it will go from one to five. Level two is, I mentioned level one was about cyber hygiene. Level two is about putting processes in your company or organization on cybersecurity. Something, you know, a, a 20 person company may not have. And by example, I mean, do you keep a listing of all the mobile devices? Do you, do you have a record of how many laptops and who has those laptops and what are their antivirus packages? That's process. Level three, CMMC three, is when CUI, controlled unclassified information, touches your network. That's when the government is giving you its prized possession, and you need to be able to accept it. That is equal to the DFAR clause that we currently have today. That's 252-204-7012, and that is the NIST 171A 110 controls. Level four and five would be very similar to what is in the NIST, um, the, the draft Bravo version, which are very exquisite capability that not everybody would have, and we don't want everyone to have them. But things like a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week SOC capability isn't something that small m manufacturer in Dubuque, Iowa is going to have or need. That's something whose uh, company that is working on nuclear, and we need to put money in to secure that information. Levels one through five, 
will be in contracts. It won't be one size fits all. So the prime may need to be level three because we're sending CUI, right. but what the prime subs out may not, and therefore that sub may only need to be a CMMC one. Um, let me um, ask you about um, the cultural change that's necessary for this. You told a great story about a very patriotic company, mm -hmm. uh, and at the end of the day, the per, you know, and you saw a little portion of a diagram, and you asked them, "Can you can you zoom that mm -hmm. out a little bit?" And it was the technical drawing for mm -hmm. a very sophisticated piece of equipment. Um, how are we going to drive this cultural change ultimately? Because people have to be thinking about security from the very first instance, not as an applique, because we've gotten sloppy for so long. How are you working that cultural change part of this? So I'll say once again, under the leadership of Ms. Lord, um, it has been the primary objective since she started. Um, we have many different things going on. Um, Secretary Esper as well. This is, this is a cultural statement coming from the Department of Defense that security is paramount, it's foundational. Under Ms. Lord's leadership, we have put in cyber resilient KPPs, that is when we're building new products, there now is a cyber resiliency KPP that we never had before. But what we're really focused on, and, and her goal has been, are the things that are in acquisition and sustainment right now, how we're going to protect them. This is why security is foundational to us now, that cultural awareness. It's not been a, it's been in all of our conversations, I would say since 2018. Um, what's really, uh, you know, it's, it's a benefit and a pleasure to work for Ms. Lord. Prior to coming in, uh, I want to say it was November 2018, she went out and said, you know, one of my goals is to make a unified cybersecurity standard. So it's great to see leaders in place in the department actually getting the work done and getting um, the energy alive to do it. it. It's been a pleasure and an honor, but we in the department see this as a cultural change. We have made security foundational, and now we need to get the DIB, our, our partners in industry, to get to the same level. Um, one of the things you mentioned that was interesting in a big uh, departure was looking at how cyber, that smaller companies can use cybersecurity as a service. Talk to us about mm -hmm. how you're working with some of these smaller companies that have struggled, for example, with the 110 NIST standards and everything else. Well, and, and as you uh, wisely pointed out, it's great that you did 80 of them, but the other 30, 30. really <laughs> matter too, really right? So talk to us a little bit about how you're working with all enterprises to sort of answer their questions as everybody works to get to these standards. And then I want to talk about punishment and enforcement a little bit. Okay. There's a lot that you can do with carrots, but there's also an application for sticks sometimes given some of the legal cases that mm -hmm. we've seen. So uh, first, we've been working with industry since this started um, and in, in collaboration. I cannot tell you the amount of uh, companies that have come in to talk to us in the Pentagon or gone to trade shows to explain how their product is equal to portions of the NIST. We are hoping that we can open the aperture up for those conversations between those product companies and the small businesses. What we've asked those product companies, and there are a multitude of them, and they're creating entire suites that you know you can purchase for X amount of dollars, you know, we can provide CMMC level three for you at blah. What we want for that to be able to do is to create a, a conversation that goes on for those companies and let the CMMC be the guide for that. But what we've told these product companies and suites is that you have to be thoughtful about how small businesses build their rates, how they bill, that you can't have these huge subscription fees up on the upfront. They had to, to create a partnership, and they have. Um, like I said before, when, when the Department of Defense puts a capability and a requirement out, industry acquiesces, they always have. We have the best national defense on the planet. Our military far surpasses anyone else on the planet. That's because our industry has met us every step of the way. And I don't see them not doing it here. And I think that the product companies that support us are going to acquiesce with the small businesses, the larges, and that middle level uh, company. I think that they'll all rise to the occasion. Um, do you see though, um, you know, you were talking about uh, cybersecurity sloppiness. It remembers, uh, reminds me of what President Obama used to say all the time, you know, don't do password one, two, three. <laughs> and yet the Inspector General themselves, the DOD Inspector General found we had the most sophisticated systems were protected by like the equivalent of, you gave a much, much better basic <laughs> password. Thank you very much for throwing a dollar sign and an at sign in there. But, um, you know, where, where are we on just, we have some very, very good systems, but we have very, very weak passwords which individuals have in their personal lives mm -hmm. sometimes as well. Talk to us about that and then I know time is short and you're about mm -hmm. to get the hook. What is the punitive element of this as well? Because there are companies mm -hmm. 
uh, that have made claims and they're, uh, you know, uh, you know, there's increased pressure on primes to certify. Mm -hmm. Give us give us your sense on both of those so, uh, as well. First of all, Miss Lord signed a memo out in uh, January, February of this year. Um, I call it the block change memo, but they made cybersecurity part of the contractor business systems and they're coming out and they're doing audits. And when they do that and they find um, there's something that's deficient, they can issue a car, you know, one through four, and they can go about that means um, that way. Um, I, I will tell you that the, the instances that I referenced, the False Claims Act, those don't come from within DOD. Those are people within the community raising the bell and alarm and going out and then going after the particular company. We're working through. Um, how we can we can make that level set change but we're we're getting there but we're not there yet but i will tell you that miss lord um is taking it very seriously um my other boss mr uh, fahey the assistant secretary of defense for uh, acquisition that is part of our conversations and the head the director of dca um, we are working every day to figure this out but in the meantime what we don't want to do is hurt our supply chain. And the one message I would just put out there is, we know this is a cultural shift. We did it before with ISO, when we came into ISO 9000. And this is just a, a, an awakening to something that has been going on. And getting standards and making you accountable and, and compliant isn't meant to ding you. We just want to get you to protect yourself and our work. And, and ultimately, they will be debarred, right? I mean, that's the message that you're telling, is if you guys don't pay attention to this, there are risks. Well, on the False Claims Act, they, the government can take that role. Right now, the focus is on getting companies level set. Our goal is to get everybody compliant. Our goal is to get everybody secure. And then let's have that conversation. And passwords, what are you telling people about just the simplest of things? It doesn't matter how good your network is if you've got yeah. bad passwords. If you don't, uh, passwords, please don't use your kid's name, your name, your first name, your middle name, your birth date, the, you know, just think about something that, you know, it's, remember it, um, put it in a safe place where only you would know to go to it. And in your company, they should have a directory of how to access those. But please stop pasting it to your laptops. Um, <laughs> stop putting it on your, your desktop. It's something that you have been given a privilege to access a system. And remember that. Kitty Arrington, the Thank Special so Assistant to Ellen Lord for yeah. Cybersecurity. Thanks Thank so, much so much for spending time with us. Look forward to talking to you again. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. No problem. Have a great day. Thanks for the opportunity.